The polar bear. It has to be the animal that I have wanted to see the longest. Far longer than I've been a professional photographer, far longer than I've even been taking pictures. All the way back to when I was a young lad and saw a lecture from the great Sir Arnold Fiennes and he talked about crossing the Arctic and the threat of polar bears and to be honest, ever since that day I've wanted to see one with my own eyes, stood on my own two feet and finally this year, well, I got to do just that. So if you're new around here, my name's Tom. I'm a professional wildlife and nature photographer from the UK and on my channel here, we talk about wildlife photography, trips, um, help and tips for you guys, as well as gear, equipment, all that good stuff. Uh, so if that sounds up your street, be sure to like and subscribe. Join the channel for loads of future videos to come. But today we're talking about a trip that I've just been on out to Churchill, Manitoba to get my feet on the ground, my feet on the ice to go and see polar bears. And it certainly was a fantastic adventure. Now, polar bears have definitely been on my list for a long time. They've been a subject that I have just wanted to go and photograph and getting the opportunity to do that sort of thing as a professional wildlife photographer certainly does take its time to pull together. And also there was another thing in my mind that um, along with my girlfriend, we made an agreement a long time ago that we would never see a polar bear without the other one there. I think when it comes to wildlife, there are some moments that are extremely special. Seeing the first of something, going to a location um, together and you know, seeing a polar bear for the first time, you, you can't do that twice and it's something we really wanted to share. Um, so yeah, it had to coincide that both of us could go and finally this year, well, it all came together and we headed out to Churchill and to go and hang out with the guys at Churchill Wild to go on a polar bear walking safari that is just absolutely awesome. So the trip all started and we flew out to Toronto, headed down to Niagara Falls, of course, you know, if you're in the area, you're gonna go and see it. Um, and that was fantastic. Wow, such a raw power of nature um, there and having done a geography case study on it back when I was at school, it was actually fantastic to see it in the flesh and it was really rather good. Um, from there, we jumped on the train and took the train, the uh, Canadian, across to Winnipeg. And that was a really enjoyable part of the journey for me. I love a good train journey. And getting on the Canadian, it was a sleeper train. So we spent the night on a kind of berth, myself on the lower and my girlfriend above me. And it was just really wonderful to watch the scenery change. You know, Toronto was still in fantastic fall colour, um, autumn colour, I should say, as an English person. And, you know, the colours were just amazing. The oranges, the yellows, the, oh, the reds, it was just superb. But going on the train was great because we gradually saw that change. Um, and on the first evening, as we were sat up um, in the buffet car in the great like um, observation domes they have on the train. You know, the scenery going past, um, it started to get much darker, colder, and started to snow. And when we woke up the next morning, there was a nice layer of snow. That was really rather exciting, because of course, when you're going to see polar bears, you don't really want to see them in the mud autumn conditions. You want nice snow and ice. And so I was feeling very grateful to the photography gods that uh, they had blessed us with some colder conditions. And when I spoke to the guys at Churchill, they had told me that, um, you know, up to that point in the season, they hadn't seen much snow at all, no ice, and the Hudson Bay was still free of ice. So we timed it just about perfectly. You know, we spent a few days in Winnipeg, saw a few of the sites there. Great little story that I didn't know that Winnipeg, of course, is the uh, the namesake of Winnie the Pooh. Um, originally, apparently, there was a soldier from Winnipeg who was a vet, travelled across on the railway um, when he was going to the First World War, and they found a bear cub who happened to become Winnie, who got 
you know, dropped off at London Zoo, who became the famous Winnie the Pooh. And anyway, that's where his name stands from. So that was quite interesting. Also a few other bits in Winnipeg, you know, popping to the Leaf and some of the other museums. We just had a nice little weekend there before we linked up with a crew from Churchill Wild to fly north up to Churchill and to really start the adventure. So Churchill Wild as a company have been running polar bear trips for 30 years now. That is as long as I have been physically alive that is amazing um, they've been running them out of a selection of eco lodges right up um, on the Hudson Bay and they offer you the unique chance to have experience with polar bears to get out on your own two feet walk with experienced guides um, to get you closer to the polar bears and to be able to watch them from standing rather than being in a vehicle or a boat or anything like that you can really just take your time and watch the bears um, that's always kind of the way I envisage doing polar bears and it was really exciting to get to work with the team there to do that. Um, we flew up to Diamond Lodge and the flight in was just amazing. I love a good flight on a um, trip. My girlfriend's not as much of a fan, but um, the small planes just offer you this great chance uh, to see landscapes. You'll know if you saw any of my Africa videos, I loved shooting out of the plane and I did exactly the same when I was up in Churchill on the Hudson Bay. The moment I got on that little plane, I was welded to the window. And as we flew in, we were extremely lucky because with the seasons just tilting into our favor, there was some ice on the bay. And, you know, just using my 24 to 120 on the Z9, I was able to get some shots that I'm super happy happy with of the bay you know as we flew in um, to Diamond Lake it's actually um, the Hudson Bay was kind of half and half there was some ice forming but it wasn't the whole way so I've got some really nice pictures of the kind of the water and the ice and it's fantastic to see at the edges of the bay how the water almost goes into slow motion how that kind of ice formation and it slows those waves down and you can really see it starting to form and freeze that is really cool it's only a very quick flight like six eight minutes from um churchill up to the diamond lake lodge um and then we were straight into the um adventure you know going in popping some gear down and we were straight out on a walk and um, we got a safety briefing of course about the polar bears and the guides who are up there you know they know what they're doing you get three guides with you most of the time on a walk and that's for your safety and just to make sure that you're really watching and anticipating the bears and not only focusing on any bears that you're moving towards but also any that can be around you know the area of hudson bay has a good population of polar bears and um, this year was a little bit trickier so we didn't find as many but you know they're still doing well in the area that means that you know sometimes you can be watching a bear uh, in front of you and there's one behind you as well so it's good to have multiple guides to keep your eyes up to to know what's happening and the guides of course gave us a safety briefing when we first get there talk us through the process of approaching the bears how you're going to you know once you've seen a bear at a distance probably like five six hundred meters you're then going to slowly kind of move the group into a single file line so that you can approach a little bit closer and then as you get there you're going to make sure that you make the bear aware of your presence going upwind of it allowing your scent to drift down to them so the bear gets the chance to know ahead of time and then you stop watch how the bear's going to react and ideally the bear's going to come towards you and give you that interaction rather than you moving towards the bear and that's how they tend to work it of course they carry um, methods to scare any bears away that might be too interested in your position and um, banging rocks you know putting those down on the ground first as a first line of defense then moving up with shouting um, and then further from that flare guns bangers and then of course they do carry a shotgun but um churchill wild in the time that they've been operating have never had to have that kind of interaction with a bear that is absolutely fantastic and it means that the guys are you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing um, to help people safely watch the bears um, and our guides Norm, Marco and Terry were just absolutely excellent really constantly watching the whole time and giving us the opportunities to view the bears and have those interactions. Now when we we're up there it was um, a fairly tricky time um, the bears you know with the ice only just forming there weren't as many bears as some years 
but we still got good chances. You know, on the first day as we walked out onto the ice, um, the Diamond Lake that the lodge is named after, we found one bear who was kind of right in the middle of the lake, came a little bit closer, gave us a few little views, but then pushed off into the distance. We then caught a glimpse of a mum and a cub, but they were so far off that after moving around and trying to get a bit closer, we just didn't catch up with them at the end of the day. And um, with the light fading, of course, you don't want to be out at night in polar bear country, so we had to kind of move back to the lodge um, for our first day. The lodge itself is just brilliant. I think Churchill Wild did such a great job with their accommodation. The food was fantastic. The hospitality is brilliant. You go in, there's coffees and teas waiting so you can warm up after a cold day out on the ice. And then dinner was just absolutely excellent every night. So much food, just absolutely brilliant. You never go hungry and the lodges, of course, are toasty warm. Um, it's really nice when the conditions are bitter outside. Of course, you do have to be careful with your camera gear in those situations, not bring it in, make sure you're bagging up. Um, but I'll talk more about that in a separate gear video and kind of shooting video um, that I will do as well. But yeah, absolutely great place to be based. So over the next two days, um, we spent every moment we could kind of getting out on walks and looking for the bears. The first couple, we didn't find very much. Um, we walked a good fair way, carrying my gear over my shoulders. I want to be ready for any interaction that's happened, but we didn't catch up with much action. We finally did catch up with this female bear and she was absolute, just perfect. She was a beautiful bear. Um, spotted her at a distance, moved into that um, single file line, got closer, got into position and as we fanned out and made that kind of structure to make sure that she would see us as a big and strong force, she came out and walked around that was just superb. Um, she was still pretty distant. I was really grateful that I had the 600 F4 with a built-in teleconverter with me. Just gave me that reach to be very flexible with my shooting. And the light was just lovely that morning. We had this really nice backlight and as she walked through it, um, I could rim light her as she was wandering across the ice. As I was shooting, I was thinking how the contrast was very high and um, they might not be the best color pictures. And it really kind of got me thinking in the black and white mode for the whole trip. That's why all of the images you'll see in this video are shot in black and white. I loved processing them like that and I think they just worked very well and that's why I ended up shooting the whole set as a black and white um, wildlife set that I think really did come out quite nice. As she moved across in front of us, of course, I was shooting multiple images, changing compositions and I also had the opportunity to get lower on the ground. Of course, when you're working with polar bears, it's really important to maintain a high presence to be as large as you can so they don't um, see you as easy prey. But um, Terry and Norm, the guys, were very um, good, came behind me so I could take one knee on the floor, get lower behind the tripod. Um, and so it maintains the kind of silhouette behind me but allows me to get those shots. That was great for getting those low angles on the bears. Um, as she moved across, she went out to then test some of the ice that was forming on the bay. So we repositioned ourselves, moved around, and I got some really nice shots of her working her way along the edge of the ice that was forming. Made a few panoramic shots that I love to do with a telephoto lens. One of her kind of, as she was testing the ice, she looked up over a really long stretch of the Hudson Bay that is an image that I'm really happy with as well as another one when she turned round back into the light and headed along the coast and just see her foot up and you can see the fur on the pads of her foot. It's something you always hear about polar bears, something to insulate their feet, help them in the cold. Just to see that really just made an image that I was super happy with. The Hudson Bay in the background, the ice on the edge in black and white with the contrast and the rimlet. It's just an image that I was super happy with. And you know, that interaction alone would have been certainly enough to me. I look around to uh, Debs, my girlfriend, and just, you know, it's a moment that we will remember for the rest of our lives. That first polar bear just watching it in front of me was, 
really rather good. You know, in those situations, I'm just shooting. I'm taking many, many images. I'm changing compositions. I'm, you know, moving from panoramic shooting to rim light shooting. I'm then overexposing for different shots. I slowed down my shutter speed a number of times so I could get movement in the images as well. And this all happens so quickly. I mean, when you've got interactions with any wildlife, it's so key to be competent behind the camera, to know the settings, to know exactly what you're doing. And I kind of just go into that just mode. I, I just know exactly what I'm doing and I'm, I'm shooting. And even though it was only probably half an hour, 20 minutes of really great movement and interaction with the bear, I really pulled a great deal of images that I was happy with. Um, and you know, when I talk to people all the time, for me, a good year as a wildlife photographer is like 12 perfect pictures that I'm super happy with. And I easily made five, six that are certainly ones for the portfolio in that period of time that is just epic in my mind for sure. Um, after she'd moved back, she went back to one of her kind of like day bed spots and we moved off and headed back up the coast. Um, you know, left her so that she could have some time to herself and we weren't disturbing her the whole time. We actually caught up with her that afternoon, evening again, as she'd moved a little bit further up, but the conditions were totally different. A storm had blown in and we had really harsh, like wintry conditions. We were goggles on, um, you know, the, it was just superb really loads of movement in the wind, the snow was drifting and blowing past her. Um, and again, some just great shots to get those more environmental portraits uh, of a polar bear hunkered down that was really nice to have as well. You know, what I'm doing on these trips when I get back, um, you know, to the lodge or anything like that, I'm always kind of looking through my images, assessing what I've shot, what I haven't done, so that I don't repeat the same images when I go out the next time. You know, I could shoot the same portrait over and over again, but that's not really much use to me. Um, so having already shot loads of backlit shots in the morning, you know, those portraits images, those more environmental shots when we're a bit further away, were really nice to have in the portfolio and certainly some of my favorites. The moments of, um, filming then as well with the the snow sweeping across and then the light burst through was just absolutely epic and that's certainly something i won't forget for a long time and that interaction with polar bears is what i really wanted to be stood on my own feet to be watching a polar bear through my telephoto lens to be able to look up and see it and just soak in the environment of the hudson bay and churchill as an area was just incredible and it really was a very exciting trip. You know, looking back, it was a pretty short and sweet trip out to Churchill, but I loved every single minute. The experience of flying over the Hudson Bay, walking amongst the polar bears, getting the chance to view them from my own feet, shoot pictures at that lower angle, and the whole time to be back by such a great company in Churchill Wild who sorted everything out for us was absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, if you do want to go to Churchill, walk with polar bears, I would certainly recommend them. And maybe you might even want to come with me in the future as your guide for photography. And if that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to my mailing list, this channel as well, if you want to hear more on that, because I know I'll certainly be going back because as much as I shot a portfolio that I'm super happy with, there's many more images I'm certainly after and very excited to get out and shoot. Now, I'm probably gonna call it there for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little talk about my recent trip out to Churchill. Um, you know, if you would like to see more content on wildlife photography, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future updates. Check out my Instagram as well, where I'll be posting some of the pictures from the trip over the coming weeks. And check out my next video, because if you're interested in how I actually made images, the gear I used and everything like that, I'll be talking about that separately. But right, that's about it for this video. I can't believe I've had the chance to see a polar bear to just realize a dream I've had since I was such a youngster. You know, photography, wildlife photography is just such a brilliant thing to do. It's given me so many moments in my life that I would have never had without the camera in my hand. I am 
just so grateful I get to do this as a job. But you know, if you guys wanna see more from me, wanna see more content, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and until the next one, guys, get out there, enjoy your wildlife, Toby, and I'll see you soon.